everyone, and welcome to this short video on using advanced analytics for increasing retail revenues. I'm Henrietta Forson, a business intelligence and analytics consultant at Thurgood and part of our analytics practice. I hope you find this video useful, and if you would like further details on, the t on this topic, it will be covered in more detail at our BI and analytics update held in London on the 29th of June. So do make sure to sign up and join us on the day if you can. Consumer goods manufacturers and retailers alike face the challenge of deciding which products to stock, in which outlets and in what volume. Stocking too much, or stocking the wrong products, will result in unnecessary storage and transportation costs, possibly even the cost of disposing products unsold. Conversely, not stocking enough of a product, or foregoing a product in an outlet where it would in fact sell well, would lead to lost revenue since end consumers are unable to purchase what is not available to them. One way to approach this could be from a top-down target's point of view. Assign products and volumes to end outlets based on, for example, their size and channel to cumulatively meet company targets. This may well do the job, but would certainly leave untapped opportunities. These opportunities can start to be uncovered using advanced analytical techniques, such as clustering or collaborative filtering. Both these techniques come in a range of flavours, but the essence of what they do is find similarities between both end outlets and products using sales data. This in turn informs where products have the potential to sell in larger volumes and where products should be introduced if not already stocked, since they are deemed likely to see succeed in that outlet. The exact types of data required to perform this analysis varies between the different methods, so you can tailor the approach to be the most beneficial for your particular needs and data availability. In general though, the more granular sales data you have, the more accurate a picture you can get of your possible opportunities. Other types of external data can also be added to get an even more accurate picture of the needs at each individual outlet, such as competitor information, local demographic data, or seasonal weather trends. I will now walk you through a quick demonstration of the thinking behind this sort of analysis, as well as the types of insights and savings that can be achieved. The demonstration will be in Power BI, although the analysis itself was conducted in the R programming language. For those of you who are not familiar with Power BI, it is a visualisation and dashboarding tool by Microsoft and allows considerable integration of R code for producing both visualisations and underlying datasets. The data I will be using is from a fictitious consumer goods manufacturer covering the sales of a range of products to end retail outlets. This first visualisation shows a correlation plot between a small selection of products based on sales to each end outlet. For example, on the third row here, you can see that sales of earth tone sensitive shower gel is positively correlated with sales of earth tones moisturising male shower gel, but negatively correlated with sales of earth tones protective bath salts. If I were tasked with deciding which products to stock in which outlets and failed to notice this type of correlation and the fact that one of these product combinations sells well together and the other doesn't, I may end up not making the best possible stocking decision. Now these relationships exist between all products and you can see there's a long list here. It just keeps going. So this type of visual analysis is just not possible to do between all the products in all categories. This is where analytical algorithms such as collaborative filtering come in. Collaborative filtering was applied to this data set to determine which products sell well together across all the available categories simultaneously. This then generated a list of suggested products and amounts of stock for each outlet, which can be compared to the actual historical sales to allow us to identify areas of high opportunity. This second dashboard shows just that. It summarises the suggested sales obtained through collaborative filtering alongside the actual historical sales, with a green part of the bar indicating potential sales opportunities over and above what was actually sold. So you can see along here. The graph is sorted to show the products with highest opportunity first, and we can see that Pin True Protect Face Cleansing Wipes has the highest overall opportunity to increase sales, as the li largest green part of the bar here, and it's already one of the biggest selling products. These filters at the top here 
allow us to view the opportunities across specific retail customers who stock the products. For example, if I were to click on Friends, the dashboard filters down to only show the products that are most successful and has the highest opportunity for this retailer. But these are still aggregations of the sales opportunities at each of the individual end outlets. By using the individual end outlet suggestions to determine our stocking strategy, we are able to implement a truly targeted and data-driven sales approach. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you've found it interesting and useful. Do feel free to reach out to either myself or any of my colleagues here at Thorogood if you have any questions, or join us in London on the 29th of June if you can, when we will be covering this topic in more detail. Thank you very much.